In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to increase your FPS in DaVinci Resolve and ensure that you're getting the smoothest possible playback no matter what editing machine you're using. It's super simple. This should be super quick. Let's get into it. I also want to note that there are chapters available in this video, so if you're looking for something in specific, you can jump around, no problem. Now, if you're working in video, I'm just going to assume that you probably already know what FPS is. If you don't know what FPS is, just know that the higher your FPS, the better, and the lower, the worse. It, it's basically just a measurement of how smooth your footage is moving. If your FPS count is super low, your footage probably looks like this. Now, what you need to understand is that the reason your FPS might be low could very well differ from somebody else's reason. What you need to try to figure out is how to increase your FPS based on whatever specific issue you might be having. And to understand how to increase your FPS, you need to filter some things out. There's like a list of things that you could, uh, you could check out, and that's what we're going to cover in this video. For example, if you're editing on a very low-end machine, it's probably safe to assume that that's the reason why. If your components in your computer aren't very beefy, uh, you're going to have a hard time playing footage back. And I'll show you how to get smooth footage nonetheless if you keep watching this video. In just a minute, we're going to get to that. If you're editing on a high-end machine like this one, it's probably safe to assume that if you're having FPS problems, it's likely a settings issue, not a hardware issue. So let's take a look at those settings. Now, these are the things that you can change and take control of no matter what machine you're using, no matter what editing computer, whether it be an old laptop, a brand new PC, or even, even this MacBook right here. This MacBook is uh, a 2021 model M1 Pro. Uh, so it's about three years old now, but because I have the settings set correctly, I could play my Blackmagic 6K footage back raw, no problem. So inside of DaVinci Resolve, you have your project open. If you come down here to the bottom right, where you have the gear icon, you have the settings, Open that up to master settings. You want to scroll all the way down till you see optimize media and render cache, this little menu section right here. Now in that menu section, there's going to be an option for render cache format. It'll be like a little drop down menu right here, right? This is where the magic happens. In this drop down menu, you're going to find a plethora of codecs to choose from. And just in case you're not following what this is, uh, this menu of codecs is an option for what format you want to render your render cache files in. So it's just like, if you can't play whatever footage you have on your timeline, what the computer's going to do is it's going to take whatever render cache format you choose, and it's going to regenerate that clip in this format instead as kind of like an alternative to whatever you have on the timeline. In simple terms, this just means that you're choosing how detailed and how robust you want your footage to be as a trade-off in order to achieve smoother playback. And what I mean by that is the better the codec, like the more uh, visually detailed it is, such as this uncompressed 10-bit, which I believe is the default, That's and that's crazy to me, but by default, it comes in uncompressed 10-bit render cache. So that's going to be like a pretty beefy render cache format. So if you're trying to render or uh, even render cache raw footage, uncompressed 10-bit, it's, it's kind of a much. It's kind of much. It's kind of a, kind of a lot. I'm not going to lie. And there's also like DNX HR uh, 444. Like that is very high quality footage you know that's 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 pretty good but it's heavy for the computer think of it as like uh lifting dumbbells at the gym if you're trying to lift the 100 pound dumbbell it's going to be a lot harder than if you're lifting that 20 pound dumbbell so we've already established what the 100 pound dumbbell is but what of these choices here what of these codecs is the 20 pound dumbbell which one so this is where i'm going to show you my little secret the codec that i always use to get a good balance of visual quality but still enough of a lightweight sort of codec so that i could play my footage back is dnx hr SQ. DNX HR standard quality right here. Click that. It's not the LB, it's SQ standard quality. You hit that and uh, it's a great balance of being able to play footage back, being able to generate the render cache files quickly, but still retaining a lot of good detail and making sure that your 6K raw or whatever high quality original footage you're using still looks good in the render cache. And the value doesn't stop there because by default, this number you have right beneath your render cache format dropdown menu uh, should be five. And what that is, is it's telling the computer after I make a change on my timeline, wait five seconds before you start generating those render cache files. Uh, you could drop that down to one so that every time you make a change, it's gonna immediately start regenerating those render cache files. So you don't have to sit and wait. Any change you make will be re-rendered in your render cache in real time. It's a great little thing to have set. The next thing to keep in mind is that you could pick up some great and even free filmmaking assets over on my website. Uh, we got some overlays, DaVinci Resolve macros, cheat sheets, treatments, and film LUTs. There's a lot of LUTs on here. It's the first link in the description if you wanna go check it out. Now back in DaVinci Resolve, 
just so that you don't have to change these settings every single time you hop into a new project, like you just want to be able to open up DaVinci Resolve and have these settings load automatically. What you could do is you come up here to your little three dots tab up here and press set current settings as default preset. And once you click that every single time you open up a new project inside of DaVinci Resolve, these settings are going to come loaded automatically. So you don't have to worry about coming in here and oh, did I choose this correct setting option? Did I set the five down to one? Did I choose DNX HRSQ? Nope. Every single time you load it, it's going to be these settings. It's super nice. Okay. So I got this all done. I'm going to press save here. So let's see how this works, right? I'm going to come up to my playback option right here, render cache, set that to smart. So this way my render cache is on, right? And I'm going to drag some footage down into my timeline, right? Now you can see after I've done that, you have this red line right here and it's slowly becoming blue. The red line is representative of the amount of footage that it still has to generate cache files for, whereas the blue line is representative of the footage that already has the render cache files generated, right? So what that means is when there's blue, it'll play back smooth. So I could just press this and you see I'm getting smooth, real-time playback right here. There's no choppiness, no nothing. Really simple, really easy, really nice to work with. And if you want to make sure that you're getting that perfect FPS playback, uh, you can see up here in your sort of top left of your program viewer, you have a green dot and a number. Now my timeline FPS is set to 24. So that means if I'm getting a 24 right here, that means I'm getting real time playback. If your timeline is set to 60 FPS and your footage is also 60 FPS and this number says 60, that means you're getting real, real time playback. In this case, I always rock with 24 and you can see I'm getting the 24 here. If you're getting anything lower than that, that means you're still not getting real time playback. And at that point, it could very well just be a matter of uh, how equipped your equipment is to be able to handle the type of footage that you're using. Another thing that's cool is that this also applies to uh, Fusion macros here. So you can see I have one of my custom Fusion macros, custom iPhone what's new screen. So like, you know how when you have an iPhone, uh, you open up an app that you just updated and it gives you like the, the what's new screen. Uh, I have a preset that generates the iPhone, the all the stuff in the background, all the icons and stuff. And you can go in and like customize it. But this is a really complicated Fusion composition, right? So if you go into the Fusion page, uh, you can see there is a lot of stuff in here, right? Like there's a lot to load, okay? And this render cache system also works for this. So I am playing this back smoothly. You could see that the animations that are in place are playing back really smooth because I have the blue line. It means it's all render cached. There's pretty much nothing that your computer can't take on at this point. Another thing that you can do to make sure that you're getting uh, real-time footage playback if you're still having problems at this point, or maybe this is just something you want to do anyways, you can lower your playback resolution. So that means like I'm seeing full resolution right here, right? This is a 1080p timeline. Granted, this is 6K footage, but if I wanted to lower the quality of the resolution that I'm seeing to maybe half so that it plays back better, so half of 1080p, I could come up here to playback, timeline playback resolution and set to half. And you could see when I start playing this, quality uh, drops quite a bit. It's uh, It definitely looks fuzzy. Uh, it's not as detailed. Uh, that's because I'm playing it back at the resolution of half of 1080. So this makes it easier for your computer to play back stuff if it's still having a hard time. The designs that they included in the software are really genius because it makes it so that anybody using any computer can put the vision that they have in their head onto screen. There's really no excuse as to why you can't make whatever you're trying to make work. And that's not to say it's going to work perfect every time. You might still have to exercise a little bit of patience. I remember the first PCs I was working with, uh, I had to have a lot of patience when, when getting the software to work and getting stuff to play back smooth but nonetheless it's still possible no monster editing machine no problem so now you're fully aware of how to get real-time playback in davinci resolve and make sure you're getting the smoothest playback possible you want to make sure that you're not risking the ability to see what you're working with smoothly right if you learned something be sure to tell me what down in the comments uh, if this makes any project you're working on any easier please tell me I'd, i really want to connect with you guys and figure out what you guys are working on leave a like it helps the algorithm maybe subscribe if you learned something and think you have anything to gain from me and uh, i will see you guys in the next video thank you